select them here to give a study this morning. The study will be Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, and the deep thoughts of the Lord. And we're going to start our study uh, in Re uh, Revelation chapter 13, starting with verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And all that dwell on the earth... Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. Let the word of Christ dwell in you in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing in another in psalms and hymns and spiritual um, songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. He that dwelleth as to remain merry in the secret as in protection, hiding place. For in the time of trouble, that being the time of Jacob's trouble, prophetically will be when God's children will take back their spiritual inheritance and they will be met with great resistance of the great multitudes. He shall hide me as in that secret place in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He has set me upon a rock, meaning strength, mighty one. Trust you in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Yahweh is everlasting strength. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock whence you are honed, and to the, and to the hole of the pit whence you are digged. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. He left the earthly temple, built of the earthly stones, and, and his disciples came unto him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus says unto them, See you not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here, here be in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is to be a condition of truth. Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Uh, that being where what his churches are to be built on. One stone upon another that shall not be thrown down as to be crushed to powder, to be pulverized, demolished. You will be brought down, understanding your weakness in his heavenly temple, before you can be built up. That being built up that celestial ladder um, of the lively stones, acceptable for the Lord's habitation. You also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, that being the house of Bethel, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices. You are to offer up your fleshly bodies for spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. That is without blemish. The white limestone was found near Jerusalem. It, um, it was Jer Jerusalem's primary building material. It was queried from the hills surrounding the city. The limestone is soft, which means it can be scratched, and it is porous, so it, it, it has to be sealed, or it will stain, it is not, and it is susceptible to etching. Archaeologists have found one of the many places where the limestone was quarried, uh, one in a neighborhood called Porhosum, meaning Quarry Man's Hill. In fact, north of the old city of Jerusalem was essentially one vast quarry. A quarry is a deep pit from which stones are extracted by man as to take out by effort or force. The building up of God's holy temple will not come from force or effort. It will be built by those who seek for him. That is Yahweh, the spirit that is within, not without, the builder of the spiritual temple of the lively stones. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And we're going to go over to Hebrews 12, uh, starting with verse um, 22. But you are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Um, Mount Zion spiritually um, is truth, uh, that being the truth seekers, unto the city of the living God, of the lively stones. He being the first begotten of the Spirit, that now sits on the right hand of God on the throne, till he comes to make his enemies his footstool. He being the finisher of the faith. 
um, uh, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finishing of our faith, but you, um, um, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Our faith comes from believing in our risen Savior of the Spirit, what we cannot see with our physical eyes, but we still believe. And I'm hold your place there. I'm going to go over, I'm going to flip over to Acts um chapter one starting with verse nine and when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received uh, him out of their sight a uh, cloud being the glory of god received him out of their sight they were not able to physically look upon him anymore because now he's in the glory of the lord which is spirit and while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as in the celestial realm, as he went up, behold, two men uh, stood by them in white apparel. Two conveys the meaning of a union, a man and woman, though two in number, are made one in marriage, the union between Christ and his church, a verification of facts between two witnesses, which also said, you men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven." And that is by the spirit. You will not be able to physically look upon him. You are to discern him. And he is um, the word of God. And he will be the word of God when he comes in on that white war horse. Um, let me read of that in Revelation 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, that being the supernatural realm opening up, that spiritual realm opening up. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself, and he was clothed with a vesture, dipped in blood, and his name uh, is called the Word of God. And in John 4, um, she, the woman at the well, she being the first one that recognizes uh, Yahweh in the vessel and takes uh, him to be her spiritual husband, Jesus tells her, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. He is seeking those out that understands that he's a spirit and he has to enter into a vessel, he being the Lord of hosts. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. This is the heavenly Jerusalem, not the earthly. This is the city of the living God of the spirit, not of the earthly, the innumerable company of angels, angels being spiritual messengers. We will all be one in spirit, those that are in heaven and those that are on the earth of being of those lively stones. We will join together as one army. To the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, back to Hebrews 12, um, 23, of, of the firstborn which are written in heaven and to God the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect this is the church of the firstborn as in the first fruits as when we are of the first day of the alpha and we're going to read uh, Genesis and we're going to go to that in Genesis 1 uh, hold your place on um, verse 1 in the beginning as in um, first and rank first fruits God created the heaven as in the celestial realm and the earth as in the earthly. And the earth <coughs> was without form as in um, worthless thing, desert, desolate, and void as in vacuity, lack of thought, empty headedness, and darkness as in misery, wickedness, obscurity as in the state of being unknown and hidden was upon the face of the deep. Uh, as in uh, a surging mass of water, the abyss, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light as in spiritual intellect, spiritual illumination, uh, wisdom, spiritual wisdom, and there was light. It will be God that speaks it, and it will become. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Uh, you are children of the light, children of the day. You are not of the night, nor are you of darkness. 
in the beginning as in the first in ranks, as in the first fruits, this being God's elect who was with him at the foundation of the world, who verily was ordained, um, foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in these last times for you. And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens and the works of thy hands, um, the, he uh, the works of thy hands, um, that being the seed line of the stars um, the, of the celestial. It will be Jesus Christ who will form and build up his holy temple. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life, of those lively stones, of the living God. And the dead were judged of those things which were written in the books according to their works. They will be judged according to their works, because they have, not, they have stayed in the six-day man, that is to labor and do all their work. We are at this time to be at rest, aboding, becoming one in Christ um, in the spirit of spiritual Ju Jerusalem, not the earthly, as in those quarries, with man extracting the stones, um, and to the spirits of just men, um, that being the inner man. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. This being the new covenant, the, the, the circumcision of the heart, letting go of the flesh man, taking on the spiritual man. And I'm going to go over to Isaiah on chapter 27, um, verse um, 1. And in that day, the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Lathiathan, the piercing serpent, even Lathiathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. And in that day, sing you unto her a vineyard of red wine. I, the Lord, do keep it. I will water it every moment, lest it any hurt it. I will keep it night and day. Fury is not in me. Who would set the briars and thorns against me in battle? I will go through them. I will burn them together, or let him take hold of my strength, that he may make peace with me, and he shall make peace with me. My strength, that being the inner man, peace as in, a, as in rest abode. Uh, stone quarries are a noisy place. Uh, there's um, banging of hammers and uh, saws, uh, rumbling of truck engines. It is not a quiet environment. The most fascinating aspect of Solomon's temple is that it rose up in a peaceful, quiet environment. And the house, when it was building, was built of stone made ready before it was brought uh, thither, uh, so that there was neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was building. That being symbolic of the Prince of Peace who will build up his spiritual house. It was as naturally, it, it was built naturally, not by force, extraction. Solomon meaning completeness or peace, recompense, restitution. When Solomon was born, the prophet Nathan uh, receives word um, from the Lord that this child is loved by God. Hence, he names him Jedidiah, meaning believed of Yah. Solomon being that the second son born by David and um, Bathsheba, um, Jedidiah, meaning beloved one, love bringer, um, also uh, resembling a hand, uh, hand in hand with the Lord, beloved of the Lord. And uh, hold your place. We'll come back there, but I'm going to go over to 1 Kings um, 5, 16 through 18. Beside the chief of Solomon's officers, which were over the work, 3,300, which ruled over the people that wrought in the work. And the king commanded, and they brought great stones, costly stones, and hoed stones to lay the foundation of the house. And Solomon's builders and Hiram's builders did hoe them, and the stone quarries. So they prepared timber and stones to, to build the house. Um, 
Let me go back to 17. And the king commanded that they brought great stones, costly stones, and, ho and hoed stones to lay the foundation of the house. Great stones, and uh, uh, as in costly stones, as in valuable, honorable, an honorable reputation, reputation. Also brightness, symbolic of those lively stones. Let there be light. And hoed stones, as in cut by man, hone out of the quarries extracted and solomon's builders and hiram's builders did hoe them and the stone quarriers so they prepared timber and stones to build the house solomon's builders build in peace and hiram's builders hiram meaning most noble high born brother of the lofty the king of tyre who supplied the building materials and workers to build the temple of yahweh they made a peaceful pack Hiram also means to be hot, charred, burned, uh, denotes a um, parched place, uh, to burn, ignite, and in, um, in, um, uh, as to be um, born, um, burn with anger as a horse snorting. It also means um, to be high, um, also overripe, maggot ridden of as of arrogancy, political status that is that was higher than it should be, rotting with worms, as in Herod, um, brother of the lofty. And then I'm going to go over to Isaiah 28, uh, 1 through 7. Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is fading flower, which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. Behold, the Lord has a mighty and strong one, which as a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, as a flood of mighty waters overflowing, shall cast down to the earth with a hand. The crown of the pride and the drunkards of Ephraim shall be trodden under feet. And the glorious beauty which is on the head of the fat valley shall be a fading flower, and as a hasty fruit before the summer, which when he that looketh upon it seeth, while it is yet in his hand, he eateth it up. And in that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory, and for a diadem of beauty unto the residue of his people, and for a spirit of judgment to him that sitteth in judgment, and for the strength to them that turn the battle to the gate. But they also have erred through wine and through strong drink or out of the way. The priests and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in on judgment. There will be those that will build up the spiritual temp temple of the lively stones. That will be our Lord Jesus Christ who will handpick his elect that are foreordained. They will come forth seeking truth. And um, if I tarry long, uh, that thy might mayest know that how is to um, behave thyself in, in the house of God, the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar um, of the um, of the ground of the um, of truth. And they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in that day will I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that, that serveth him. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous, as in Solomon's part, the great stones, those costly stones, as in um, valuable, um, honorable, rep, um, of an honorable reputation and brightness, in um, Hiram's as in a uh, parched place, as in that pit, that quarry, where the stones are extracted by force, uh, by man, and the wicked between him um, that serveth God and him that serveth him not. And then I'm going to go to Isaiah on 29, 13 and 16. Wherefore the, 13 through 16, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips to honor me, but have removed their heart from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precepts of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. 
For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Woe to them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark. And they say, Who seeth us, and who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay, for shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not, or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding. But now, O Lord, thy art our father, as in our heavenly father Israel, not the fleshly father Jacob, and we are the clay, and thy art our potter, and we are all the work of thy hands. Uh, Isaiah 27, um, verse uh, 6. He shall call cause them that come of Jacob to take root. Israel shall blossom in blood and fill the face of the world with uh, fruit. Take root as to go down into the ground, the ground that being of Lucifer. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? The nations were weakened when that star wormwood fell that brought the bitterness, that brought the calamity, that brought the laws to the man savior. And gonna, we're going to read of that in Revelation 8, starting with verse 10. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Wormwood means bitterness, but it also means a calamity. A calamity is an event that causes great and often sudden disaster, distress, destruction. We know destruction to be a Paul yon, Abaddon, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden disaster, sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. That sudden disaster, distress, destruction that came upon us is the coronavirus. Corona meaning crown. Crown being a circular headdress worn by a monarch as a symbol of their authority, and that being the laws that they have set up um, to um, save, be the man's savior. And um, the weakening of the nation shall come by uh, their sorceries, and that is in Revelation 18, verse 23. And in the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and in the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries, as in medication, pharmaceutical, magic, witchcraft, were all nations deceived. That is where how the nations will be deceived by this um system be system lest there shall be any among you uh, man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turned away this day from the lord our god to go and serve the gods of these nations lest they should be among you a root as an as an um bottom deep that um bear that beareth gall gall as in a poisonous plant a poppy a hemlock uh, serpent venom. The poppy plant is what opiates are made from. And the hemlock plant is highly toxic. It can give you COVID-like symptoms. Um, it it will, can cause breathing um, problems. Um, there's a healthcare industry um, material site in hemlock, and they play a big part in the global fight against the COVID-19 virus. Uh, Israel, our spiritual father, shall blossom and bud as to spring out and it shall come to pass that the man's rod whom i will choose shall blossom with fruit as in those first fruits coming forth as when we are of the first day and then on um, verse 9 of um isaiah 27 verse 8 and the measure when it shooteth forth i will debate with it he will stayeth his rough wind in the day of the east wind by this therefore shall the iniquity of jacob be purged and this is all the fruit to take away his sin when he maketh all the stones of the altar as chalk stones that are beaten and asunder. The gro groves and images shall not stand up. This being when not one stone will be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. One stone as being one in Christ Jesus of the living stones upon another that being the home stones. They being those that will be crushed to powder as in chalk stones. Chalk stones is a vi fine um, ground powder that is easily, um, is finely grounded, that is easily pulverized. The Lord of, of that summit will sever us, will come. Let 
The Lord will come in a day when he looketh not for him at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in asunder as to cut him um, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Those are the, of the lively stones and then those that are of the earthly stones. Um, they will not stand uh, up as in Hiram as to be high as an arrogant uh, maggot ridden. Um, God will bring them down. Uh, as to pulverize them, or to crush them to powder. Hearken to, to me, you that follow after righteousness, you that seek the Lord, our spiritual Father. Look unto the rock where you have been honed. Uh, wisdom uh, has builded her house. She has honed out her seven pillars, uh, she being um, wisdom. And I'm going to go over and read of her in Proverbs uh, 9, verse 1. Wisdom has built her house. Uh, she has honed out her seven pillars. She has killed her beast. Uh, she has mingled her wine. She has also furnished her table. Beast being the lowest form of the flesh of the six-day man, um, down that celestial ladder, they are of a beastly nature, um, ham seed line. Uh, she has sent forth her maiden. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. She's crying upon the highest places of the city, as in Hiram's. Come out of those earthly temples, honed by the to tools of men. Whoso is simple, let him turn in thither, as for him that wanteth understanding, she says to him, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish, and live, and go in the way of understanding. He that reproves of us um, in and live as in those lively stones built in a, a sure foundation the foundation of solomon's temple uh, was deep in the ground and they had strong sto stones to resist the force of time and the rest will be called out ones a great deal of sacrifice awaits us once we commit ourselves to the building of the heavenly temple the most valuable stones lose as much as 60 percent of of their initial size and mass before they are uh, considered um, considered finished beautiful jewels. We must sacrifice. Um, parts of our lives, significant parts of our lives, to be transformed into one of his jewels. Uh, Romans twelve one and two. Hold your place. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but ye be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of uh, God. God is um, confident of the building and, and his um, plan to finish it. Uh, which will um, make the glory of the former temple pale in comparison. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, as in Solomon's temple that rose up with peace, not not the um, noisy quarries of the man's tools, and that he may, might make known um, the riches of his glory um, on the vessels of mercy which had alone prepared uh, unto glory, even us, when he had called um, not of the Jews only, but also the Gentiles. Judah will come forth first, they be in the first fruits of the spiritual harvest. Judah is who um, came forth first into um, battle. They will bring forth the Gentiles. That will bring in the 12,000 from each tribe of Israel, the 144,000 that will be sealed with truth. For we know that all things work together for good to them that um, love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also de did predestinate to be conformed to the image of the Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Um, 
In Solomon's day, the temple rose on a historical site of Mount Moriah. And I'm going to go over and read in Genesis 28, starting with um, verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran, and he lighted upon a certain place, and he tarried there all night, because the sun was set, and he took of the stones, that being of the, um, of, um, that will be prophetically of the lively stones of that place. And he put them for his pillows, pillows being a headpiece, ceremonial headpiece that a priest wears. And he lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. That ladder being that staircase, that high place, um, that um, spiritual promotion. And behold, the angels of God, they were ascending and de descending on it. God's children ascend, they do not descend. We are to discern the spirits. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land wherein thy lie is to thee, will I give it into thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and I will keep thee in all places, whether thy goest, and I will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. He will bring us back to that land. That will be a spiritual land. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. The Lord as in Yahweh. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. That is the gate to the celestial realm. And Jacob rose up early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put for his pillows, and he set it up for a pillar, and he poured oil upon the top of it anointing it that stone and he called the name of that place um bethel meaning house of god but the name of the city was called luz at the first and jacob vowed a vowed a vow saying if god will be with me and will keep me in this way that i go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on as in the priestly robe so that i come again to my father's house in peace then shall the Lord be my God. So this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house, and all that thy shall give me I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Tenth being God's elect. And I will bring forth the seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains, as in that uh, promotion. Uh, and my elect shall inherit it, and my servant shall dwell as to abide there. Christ will send his angels, the angels that ascend and descend. That is when the supernatural realm will be opened up to allow the supernatural um, realm to cross, cross over. That border um, between heaven and earth will be lifted. Angels being spiritual messengers, um, that will be the living stones. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, that being the angel of the Lord with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. That being the dead in Christ, not the lively stones, but those dead stones. Then we which are alive, that being the lively stones and remain, those that not have bowed the knee to the image of Baal, uh, the clouds being his glory of the celestial realm, um, that the air being the Uruk, the spirit, um, uniting with him in the spirit uh, as in acts one when the two witnesses uh, uh, said why stand you gazing up into heaven the same jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven that is spiritually his spiritual temple the lord of hosts um, revelation 13 verse 8 of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world and um, we're going to go over to Jeremiah 11, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord, uh, saying, Hear you the words of this covenant, and speak unto the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, 
and say unto them, Thus say the Lord God of Israel, Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant, which I commanded your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice and do them according to all which I command you, so shall ye be my people and I will be your God. You are to listen to his commands, not man's, that I may perform the oath which I have sworn unto your fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey as it is this day. Then answered I and said, So it be, O Lord. Then the Lord said unto me, Proclaim all these words in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant and do them. For I earnestly protested unto your fathers in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, even unto this day, rising early and protesting, saying, Obey my voice. Yet they obeyed not, nor inclined their ear, but walked every one in the imagination of their evil heart. Therefore I will bring upon them all the words of this covenant which I commanded them to do, but they did um, them not. And the Lord said unto me, A conspiracy is found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. A conspiracy, conspiracy is an alliance of treason. Treason means to um, be belong to one's to betray one's country as to kill the sovereign, to overthrow the government. And they turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers, which refused to hear my words, and they went after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers. Therefore, thus say the Lord, behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. Then shall the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto the gods unto whom they offer incense, but they shall not save them at all in the time of their trouble, as in Jacob's trouble. For according to the number of thy cities were thy gods, O Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem have they set up altars to that shameful thing, even altars to burn incense unto Baal. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, you follow him. But if he be Baal, then follow him. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Jesus says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. The opposite of love is hate, those who don't. That shameful thing specifically being an idol and i'm going to go over and i'm going to hold your place there i'm going to go over and i'm going to read exodus 20 uh, starting with verse 1 and god spoke all these words saying i am the lord thy god which brought thee out of the land of egypt of the perverse spirit out of the house of bondage he's taking us out of bondage into liberty in him thy shall have no other gods before me we are to be in um we are to be at rest abode um with the one voice the one lord that will be our high um, priest melchizedek that will um, be the lord's day the six day man's labor and work uh, for speaking as gods will be finished for the lord shall be king over the over the earth in that day there shall be one lord in his name one that will be through the two witnesses um, that vessel that will be anointed to hold um, his spirit. That will be the altar on this earth. And thy shall not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. An image is a representation of an external form of a person or thing in art. The general impression that a person, an organization, or product presents to the public. Thy shall not bow up a, 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 a that thing that image that representation of the external form of a person or thing in art is the coronavirus symbol that has everybody in um, bowing down in servitude to thy shall not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for i the lord thy god am a jealous god visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me if you love him you will keep his commandments the opposite of love uh, is hate, those that don't. And then um, I'm going to go back to Isaiah um, 14. 
Therefore pray not thou for this people, I mean Jeremiah, sorry, Jeremiah 11, verse 14. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. Uh, their trouble, that being Jacob's trouble. Jacob, the flesh side of man, grabbing onto another man's heel to save them. Uh, those that are honed out of the quarries that must be drawn on, uh, thrown down and pulverized. What hath my beloved to do in my house, seeing she has wrought lewdness with many, and the holy flesh is passed from thee? When thy doest evil, then thy rejoices. The Lord called thy name a green olive tree, fair and of goodly fruit, with the noise of great tumult he hath kindled fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee has pronounced evil against thee, for the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah. For they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger and offering incense to Baal. And the Lord has given me knowledge of it, and I know it. Then thy showedest me their doings, uh, it being of that perverse thing. But I was like a lamb or an ox that was brought to the slaughter, and I knew not that they had devised devices against me, saying, Let us destroy the tree with the fruit thereof, and let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name may be no more remembered uh, from the land of the living, of the li lively stones, God's royal priesthood, handpicked by him, not man, Jeremiah meaning Yah loosens, Yah establishes, Yah appoints, Yah sends, elevated by the Lord. He will uh, set up um, on high um, who he wants to be elevated up that celestial ladder, not man. He says, let there be light, spiritual intellect, spiritual illumination, not man. Satan will try to uh, pervert, um, prevent this uh, God's Holy Spirit uh, priesthood from coming forth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And then I'm going to go over to Genesis 21, 22, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here uh, I am, uh, that this will be the testing um, of the obedience to his commands. Uh, he says, Here I am. He's putting Yahweh first and M being that vessel um, that Yahweh um, will speak through. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Son as the builder of the family, Isaac meaning to laugh, to express joy. Also, um, derision, um, laughter and expressions of grief are um, psychologically very uh, kindred, which is why uh, it's not always clear if one is crying or laughing. Laughter is contagious, which is why it's associated with singing, expressions of um, synchrocity. When Isaac was uh, finally born in Sarah's old age, as in um, spiritual maturity, um, the divine time to bring forth, Sarah said, God has made laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. She laughed because of, um, of her faith, as in the substance of things hoped for, for the, um, for the evidence of things not seen. These being the, the song uh, we will sing in unison together. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him as a habitation. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. A time to worship and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Mariah means scene of Yah, place of reverence, to fear, reverence, a place of supreme prominence. This being where Solomon built the temple to Yahweh. Mariah describes um, bringing about of a unified effect by means of stones or words, instructions, also meaning rain, the rain that falls during the first period of the ge uh, agricultural year when the seedlings um bud but don't bear fruit yet 
um, this being spiritually the first two and a half months of the Lord's Day of the five month period split into two and a half month segments. The first two and a half months being the Elijah ministry to turn the hearts to the fathers. Um, to teach uh, um, a teacher who teaches children that cannot think for themselves, as in Mother Israel, who, who will nourish with uh, her milk. And the second part is to see, to understand, to be visible, revelation, to be strong, um, or bitter, as in that poison. You can be strong uh, in Christ Jesus, um, the anointed one, or you can be in bitterness to that star that fell, that being Lucifer. Um, upon one as to be united as one in synchrocity of that song. And mountains as in spiritual promotion as to um, arise, ascend. You must be willing to sacrifice your fleshly bodies as a sacrificial lamb for the indwelling of his Holy Spirit to become those lively stones. And then three of Genesis 22. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and he saddled his ass and he took up two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place which God had told him. He is, he's obeying uh, God's commands. And then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Three is on the Holy Spirit. He was able to see his spiritual eyes were being opened because he obeyed God's commands. And Abraham said unto his young men, as, as you obey his commands, you climb higher up that celestial ladder. One step at a time. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide you here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Now he's saying I, as in uh, Yahweh, I represent our heavenly father, our spiritual father. Abraham was the father of faith, what, what we can't see, that being our spiritual father. He will lead us um, and guide us. And he said, and we will and, and will come again unto you. That's faith speaking. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. Where is the lamb for the burnt offering? He is saying, My father, as in his earthly father, not heavenly father. And Abraham answered, Here am I. Uh, he is putting the vessel as in that earthly father before I, as in the spiritual father. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they bent, went both of them on uh, together. Um, we must understand we have to be um, willing to sacrifice and give up everything we've known at, of the six day man and take on the spiritual man um, in faith. Um, the spiritual wisdom, letting go of the fleshly uh, knowledge that uh, has been given us. God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. It is God who will handpick his sacrificial lambs for acceptable sacrifices upon his altar. He being that cardio knower. And they came to the place which God had told him up told him of and Abraham built an altar there and he laid the wood in order and he bound Isaac his son and he laid him on the altar upon uh, the wood uh, Abraham symbolic of our heavenly father uh, that will hand pick us for his vessels um, for his Holy Spirit to dwell in uh, that will be um, his Holy Spirit of the end days um, those jewels uh, Abraham meaning um, strong to protect um, this being a a private strength, as in Sarah's strength, came from synchrocity. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and he took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I, here am I. He's reverenced himself as that vessel before the Lord. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thy anything to him, for I now I know that thy fear is God, seeing that thy has not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. Lay not thy hand as in the power of man, as in that vessel, um, before I um, upon the lad. 
man can do nothing you can have all your altar calls you want it is god who will present his lambs to the to uh, be sacrifices um just um in his um timing he being the cardio knower he knows those um that are without blemish uh, fit for a sacrifice and everyone has their own spiritual maturity to come forth uh, he knows their timing just as isaac came forth in her um just as sarah came forth in her old age uh, not before um bringing forth isaac we must be willing vessels to give up our fleshly bodies uh, on his altar our act of faith we will be justified um, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? And I'm going to go over to Hebrews uh, 13, 9. Be not carried away about with diverse and strange doctrine, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats which have not profited them that have been occupied uh, therein. We have an altar whereof they have no right to eat, which serve the tabernacle, that the tabernacle, uh, this being the tabernacle that will be built of the lively stones, handpicked by the Lord himself. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Without the camp, they are not allowed in because they are of that beastly nature. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Uh, let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. We are uh, one to come, the city of the living God. By him, um, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not, for which with such sacrifices God is well pleased. And then we're going to go back to Genesis 2, verse 12, 22, verse 12. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do you thy anything unto him. For now I know that thy fear is God, seeing that thy hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, uh, from me. Withheld thy son as the builder of the family. You also are lively stones, built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to the Lord, as without blemish. And then 13, and Abraham lifted up his eyes and he looked and behold behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and he offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. When thou hast made an end of cleansing it, thou shalt offer a young bullock without blemish and a ram out of the flock without blemish. And they gave, um, and they give their hands as in power that they would put away their wives and and being um, guilty they offered up a ram of the flock for their trespass um, trespass as their guilt uh, it was caught in a thicket by its horns as in power and he went and took the ram and he offered him up he being symbolic symbolically the only one that can relieve us of our guilt not man so shall thy put away the guilt of innocent blood for from among you when thy shall do that which is right in the um in the sight of the lord and he said now also let it be according unto your un, unto your words be with whom it is found shall be my servant and you shall be blameless jesus christ went before us becoming the first begotten in the spirit he was blameless and without spot we are to follow his example he is our heavenly father of the spirit you must take on the spirit to be his sons sons being the builders of his family and 14 and abraham called the name of that place yahweh jireh as it said to this day and the mount of the lord it shall be seen uh, it uh, shall be seen uh, it being in the bodily shape of the Holy Spirit in whatever form or vessel he chooses to dwell in. 
And John bare records saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him. In the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen that being atop the, that mountain of Mount Moriah, that house of God, Bethel, uh, I am stands at the top. I being the spirit of Yahweh and M being the vessel that will hold his spirit, that will hold up his temple of that lively cities built on lively stones. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod and the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. Wisdom has builded her house. She has honed out her seven pillars, pillars being what holds up a temple. Seven meaning spiritual completeness. And I'm going to end it with Revelation 1, starting with verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. And his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice is the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, right as in your, the spiritual side. He sits on the right hand of God on the throne. He being our high priest Melchizedek, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. He was with us in the first and he will be with us in the last on the Lord's day. I am he that liveth and was dead and behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. He has the keys of hell, that being your fleshly grave. He will release you of your fleshly prison. He is the only one that can do that. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in thy right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels, spiritual messengers of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. God's elect the light. And we're going to end this today, elect. You have a great day until the morning.